Welcome back to 628 Dirt Rooster Channel, where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Everybody loves a good speed inspection right here at dark. Fixing to blast through these two real quick on my way to the gym. That's right, I'm going to get my pump on. That ain't a good sign. I don't uh, like to see bumblebees coming out of my hive. There you go. I bet you this hive's dead. <laughs> it's dead all except for the bumblebees and the moths. Crap. And the hive beetles. This inspection's gonna be faster than I thought. Be the problems. Moth problems. Dang. There's a difference if you don't know between a moth larva. There's a moth larva. There's a big old fat fishing one. Fishing bait one. That's a moth larva. And a hive beetle larva. I pull this frame out, and I'm sure it's probably going to have plenty of hive beetles on it. Unfortunately, I've killed all my fire ant mounds around here, and I don't have anywhere to set these things other than take them home and stick them in the freezer. Now, here's a good comparison. Those are hive beetle larva. You can see the damage they've done. They've slimed the whole thing and eaten caps off of stuff and there's wax moth wax moth larva they are quite a bit larger as they develop I think you could do some good fishing with that whole bunch of them in here. This is not something I like to see, but it's part of beekeeping. Especially when you get busy and leave a hive unattended for any length of time because you think they're doing so good. There he goes, evidence of why they got weak. They went queenless. There's a chewed out queen cell right there. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. That's a chewed out queen cell. So apparently they went queenless for a period of time, hatched a queen and just uh, got overrun with, more than likely overrun with uh, high beetle larva and just couldn't couldn't fight them off I tell you what I don't know what it is about this location right here but and you, you probably could see it if you look back through some of my older videos but this spot right here has had more trouble than any other spot I've ever had and it's not even the same box it's just that location it's the same I mean on the same rack I, I usually have three hives sitting there and that one on the far right end for whatever reason always has trouble I've had at least one dead out in it from who knows what. I've lost a couple of them to hive beetles and here's another one and uh, I don't know maybe I just better quit putting them on that end of that stand. <laughs> Hopefully this one here is faring a lot better. I know they are when I crack the lid and bees fall out. <laughs> uh, here's one to clean up. This is not going to be a quick inspection. I might spend a few minutes on this.
this one here is thriving I don't see any problems with it other than what I've done I like that though it means they're doing well what I do on this one this comb right here is so new and soft it may have a few eggs in it but it's mostly drone comb and it's full of honey and it's real soft so I can't frame it up uh, not very easily anyway so I'll swap lids and I'll clean this lid off real quick I'll run a torch through it real quick and put it on here because I didn't bring anything to put honey in so I'll just take this lid with me back to the house and clean this lid up when I get there nasty dead out hive beautiful healthy hive and that's been pretty consistent on this stand the right side has always got problems and the left side does well every time go figure I gotta check over this lid real good make sure my queen's not on there I just did that real quick to catch any beetles, beetle larva, moth larva, anything that might be hiding in the cracks and crevices of that lid. And I'll let it cool for a second. And uh, they'll do the rest. They'll clean up all this. This is one problem we get around here. I think these might be little sugar ants. But they get up in between the wood and the metal in these lids. And uh, they don't really do any damage to the hive, but they're in there. They're eating honey and nectar and whatever they can get. I got one more I'm going to go into real quick. This is one that I split up and sold five frames out of it. And uh, I sold the queen with the five frames of course. And I didn't put a queen back in it. And it's been about three weeks now I think. I'm just going to go in real quick and see what they look like. These are, uh, these, this was originally a cutout that I did. And the reason they're gapped on the ends like this is because it was so full of honey that uh, they were bridging everything together. So I just came in and cut the honey out of it, stuck it back in. And of course, there's enough blooming around here that they're building honey back anyway. So they're not starving. Plus I'm feeding a little bit every once in a while. I left enough brood in here for them to make their own queen and there should be a queen in here by now. There's a queen cell that's been chewed out. I don't believe that one hatched. I think it was chewed out. I don't know. I'll go through it and see how many more there are and if that's the only one there's a good chance that's where she come from but there's I'm quite certain a queen in here somewhere. Whether she's bred and laying or not, I'll know in just a few minutes here. And she is. All this right here. Wait, oh, daggum, the whole thing. Everything you see that's not capped is all small larva. Young larva. So I do have a laying queen in here. I'm going to run through it real quick and see if I can't spot her. Yeah, this is looking good. She's got all this laid up. Everywhere there's not honey, there's a larva. Now the fella that got the other half of this hive, that's some good genetics in this hive. I can tell by the way this one's laying. He's in Alabama. And uh, if you're watching this video, here's what all your sister bees look like. I hope yours are doing just as well. I know his are doing good because he texts me 
shortly after and so they were collecting pollen like crazy. There's another queen cell right here where they're working on tearing it down it looks like. That's probably the one she came out of. This next frame is really loaded with bees and I'm hoping she's on it. I hope she doesn't stick to the wall when I move it away. <laughs> Sometimes she'll step off in the box and won't be on the frame when you pick it up. Yeah, this, this was the last place she's been. There's eggs all in this one, so I expect if I find her, she's probably going to be on this one. There's a whole lot of other places she could be. There she is, I see her. Right there in the bottom of the box. I'm fixing a snagger and marker. Come on girl, roll over. There she is. I put the box right back in the same order I had it in and I'm gonna let her loose back on the same frame she was working there she goes I know some of you are probably wondering, why don't you put some more frames in there so they don't build that lid out like they did those other boxes? Well, I'm running short on frames, so I have to build more. If I had blank empty frames with nothing drawn out, I would. Uh, I wouldn't put any more drawn frames in there. There's just not enough bees to maintain that much to fight off uh, beetles and moths on that much real estate. So for right now, they're on five frames. I'll be back in them this weekend, and if I can put some more frames together, some fresh frames, I'll go ahead and add some. Or uh, maybe step them down to a nuke, but I'll probably just leave them in this box. They appear to be doing well, and I'll just add frames to them as I get some more. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This stuff's so good, I'm surprised they hadn't outlawed it. Mm -mm -mm.